Hey guys, welcome back to Northwest Small Batch Brewing. It is another brewing day for uh, cucumber kolsch today. So this is the first time I've made a kolsch, so it should be good. Uh, I've already milled most of the grain. Uh, what do we got here? 10 pounds of German Pilsner and half a pound of Vienna. Uh, you can use 100% Pilsner if you want. Um, other than that, I threw a couple of handfuls of rice holes. And um, let's finish up milling real quick. I did forget to say uh, welcome, and if you're new here, uh, it would help me out a lot if you would hit the like, thumbs up button, and uh, hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the video, and then use the bell icon to adjust how you want to be notified every time I put out a new video. All right, so we've got the grill, the grill mained. That's the kind of morning I'm having. <laughs> I've got the grain milled, and uh, let's move over to the pot. All right, guys, so I've got uh, my strike temperature at 156. Uh, the actual mash temperature is going to be about 149. So once I put this in, it should come down in temperature. And then uh, we will be good to go. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can do it from this angle so you can see a little better. All right. It is hard to mash in on your own sometimes. And I'm doing this left-handed so that you can see better. So there you go. All right, that's it. I'm gonna keep stirring this stuff in. I'm gonna turn the temperature down to 149. One eternity later. All right, guys. Uh, so it has been 90 minutes since uh, I started the mash. So pump is turning off. And I'm going to go ahead and start draining this grain. And I'm going to turn uh, the heat up to boiling. So while the grain is draining, the wort is starting to come to a boil. And so I will be back in just a moment. When the wort is at a boil, we can add our hops. All right, guys, so I don't know if you can tell, but uh, it's starting to build up a little bit of steam here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this basket of grain. Mostly it's drained. It might, be, it might be draining a little bit. Yeah, so it is still draining a little bit. Hang on, I want to move the uh, little bucket I have for it a little bit closer. A little bit closer. Uh, and I'm just going to do it as quickly as I can. There's no graceful way to do it. You're going to get some uh, liquid in there. I like to put it at a little bit of an angle like this. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it doesn't look like you can. Anyway, I have it at an angle. It's basically sitting on top of my grain bucket. So that way it'll continue to drain grain. Well, I can't talk today. It'll continue to drain, and that, that way I can pour anything that's draining back in to the kettle for a bit. Once it gets up to a boil, I'll be back to drop in the uh, hops. See you in a few. All right, guys, we're doing pretty good. Uh, sorry about the fan, but it is at a boil, so I need to keep that going. Hopefully you can hear me through it. Uh, just taking some notes here, um, checking to see where I'm at. Um, I did take a pre-boil gravity. I will stick that up in the screen for you to see it. It landed at 1046. And surprise, surprise, my expectation was that I would get 1046 for my pre-boil gravity. So that was perfect. Uh, pre-boil size six gallons which is also exactly what I was hoping for uh, everything else looks good so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the hops a word about the hops it's two ounces of domestic Hallerto uh, I have you may not be able to see this this is German Hallerto Blanc uh, it's the northern brewer whatever their generic you know 
hot brand is. Each of these packets is an ounce, so I'm going to put two ounces in all at once, and it will go in for the full 60 minutes. Um, that being said, you don't have to use Hallertow. However, um, Kolsch beer, it is really important to use some kind of German noble hops. So you can use any German noble hops you want. Uh, you don't have to use Hallertow. You could use um, Spalt, uh, Saz, uh, Tetning, ha and of course Hallertow, which I'm using. Apologize if I'm uh, misspelling, or sorry, mispronouncing any of those, but my German's not so good. So um, you can substitute out for those hops if you want. Now I know it doesn't look like it's boiling. That's because I took the lid off temporarily so that I could put in the hops. I'll be putting the lid back on. Contrary to, pro to uh, popular belief, you can leave a lid on it cracked and it will allow the DMS to dissipate. It will not be a problem. So, hops are in. Very nice. Lid is gonna go back on. Keep an eye on it though, because you can get a boil over real quick. All right, I will see you back here in 60 minutes. Easy peasy. One hour later. All right guys, so we're getting there. Uh, we're down to 74 degrees. It's not gonna get a whole lot cooler on its own. Uh, so I'm going to transfer it to the fermenter and stick it in the fermentation chamber for just a little bit until it comes down to 60 degrees because that's what we're going to ferment it at. So uh, I will be back after I start transferring this. Let me show you how I do this. Uh, this is handy dandy. The um, Klyhammer system comes with this pump and I should just be able to turn the pump on as long as I turn on my valves and then boom daddy. Bob's your uncle, and I will be back. There it goes. Do a little aeration going while I'm at it. And I'll be back as soon as it's ready for the uh, yeast to pitch. Hey everybody, so we finally got this down to uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna go ahead and pitch the yeast. This is uh, K97, I don't know if you can see that, but K97 Safel yeast, specifically for uh, specifically for this type of beer. And uh, yeah, that's it. We'll go ahead and let that ferment for a week at 60 degrees, and then I'll come back in a week and explain what happens next. See you then. One week later. Hey guys, so it has been a week since we put the beer in the fermenter, and uh, I decided to start getting the uh, cucumbers ready. We're not going to put them in yet, but uh, I have six cucumbers that I have um, skinned because the skin might give it some tannin if you leave that on there. So I took the tin off. The tin off. It's late. Took the skin off. Uh, I also obviously cubed them up and put them in a plastic freezer bag. And exactly that is going to go into the freezer uh, for a couple days. And then I will take it out of the freezer. Uh, and let it thaw out in the refrigerator for a couple of days. Basically, I want them ready to put in the fermenter at the week two mark, but you put them in the freezer because it helps break down the cell walls in the, in the, in the uh, cucumber to release more juice. All right, guys, so we're at the, what, two week mark. I have taken my thawed cucumber out and I have put it into this pan which I've sanitized with star sand. I've also thoroughly sanitized this mesh bag with sanitizer and I've got my cucumbers and they're nice and juicy. In fact, there's so much juice has gone through the bag, which is fine. Everything, the juice and all is gonna go into the fermenter. Uh, and this is um, a glass weight that's usually used for uh, fermenting things like sauerkraut and that sort of thing. Uh, you can buy these on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Um, any food safe weight will work. You want to weigh this down because if it sits above your, like if it floats in your fermenter uh, and it's in there for a couple weeks, it's most likely going to grow mold. So you have two options. You can like several times a day open the fermenter and push the bag down below the surface, uh, which of course introduces oxygen. Or 
you can get a weight that's you know some kind of food safe weight obviously we need to spray this weight down um, with sanitizer um, because you know everything has to be sanitized at this point um, and then that'll hope hopefully pull the bag down below the surface and because there's already alcohol in the uh, well it's beer now uh, it should have no problem with um, keeping mold growth you know at bay as long as this is kept under the surface I'm not really gonna tie it tie it because I'm not gonna go crazy here and I'm not gonna worry about trying to get it off the bottom uh, of the uh, you know we're not going to pull this out until it's ready to to uh, keg so it's fine just to go to the bottom uh, I did raise the temperature uh, very slowly like a, a degree at a time until it hits 65 it'll stay at 65 uh, till tomorrow evening so basically for 24 hours and then um, you have to kind of work out on your calendar but basically you want to uh, start start at the end right at your 30-day mark and move backwards and you're gonna to want to be able to turn down the temperature one degree at a time until it hits 35 degrees Fahrenheit uh, on your final day, which would be like 30 days into this thing. All right, I'm gonna go throw this in the fermenter and then uh, again, we'll be lowering the temperature slowly of the fermenter down to 35 for the final day. Uh, and uh, I will see you then when it's done and ready to keg up. Two weeks later. All right, guys, so it's been 30 days. The beer is ready. It actually started bubbling through the uh, top here just as soon as I decided to uh, move it to the keg. So it's at 35 degrees, right? I slowly moved it down to 35 degrees. If you want to see the full schedule of kind of how I did that, check the description. It'll be in the recipe. Oh, yeah, it looks fantastic, guys. Nothing weird on top. All right, I'm just going to transfer it. Um, yeah. So, nothing more to see. I'm just going to transfer it to the keg, and then it's going to go from the keg into the kegerator for a week at 12 PSI to carbonate, and I'll be back to uh, pour the first beer and give it a taste, and we'll see how it is. See you then. All right, everybody, so you saw the uh, pour cam, and uh, let's get into this. So I still have a decent amount of um, head retention on it, so I'm really happy about that. I don't know if you can see, uh, but it is pretty clear. I mean, it's fogged up a little bit because there's condensation because it's warm in the house here, but uh, really clear uh, for, for what it is. Uh, I pulled this one out just because I'm not going to drink it right now. I already had uh, two of these. I bought a four-pack, and I already had one actually too, uh, earlier, not today. Uh, this is an example of a commercial Kolsch. I just wanted to compare it to the one I made. This one does not have any flavorings in it. It's made in the style of the uh, German uh, beer purity laws. So um, it's a little bit flowery for me as far as the hops go, but it's a very nice clean beer. So that's just an example of a commercial made one. So where are we at on this one? So um, I'll throw it up on the screen. It ended at 10, 10.07 actually. So ABV 5.64%. I expected 5.6, so right on the button. I mean, it's, this ended exactly the way I expected. Um, yeah. There's not much more to say. Uh, I will say that, that it has a super, so the cucumber smell, to me, it's, it's a little too heavy of a cucumber smell. It's almost like uh, a cooked cucumber smell. I don't know, it's a, little, it's a little heavy. Let's see how it tastes. You know, that's not bad. Uh, I still, feel like it's a little heavy on the cucumber. Um, I don't know. Probably, I guess, 
if I did it again, or if, if, if anyone out there is thinking about making it, I'd suggest doing like one week with the cucumbers. I left them in for two weeks and maybe that was too much or too long. It's not bad, it's just a little bit too much. But man, that is really clean, really clean, really crisp. Um, just, I mean, you wouldn't know that it's five and a half, you know, 5.6% ABV. It's so gentle going down. Uh, crystal clear. That's a good beer, my friends. I think that uh, if I were to make it again, I would either just omit the uh, cucumber altogether, which let's be honest, a Kolsch normally doesn't have any extra flavorings. It just sounded like, you know, when you think of water with a cucumber in it, it's like, oh yeah, the essence of cucumber. Unfortunately, this took on just a little more than an essence, um, which, you know, in fact, the aroma is even stronger than the flavor, um, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, there's not a lot of hops, right? Two ounces of uh, Hallerto, so there's not a lot of hop action going on. Um, so there's not a lot of bitterness to it. Uh, yeah, I would say if you want to make a Kolsch, use this recipe and just don't do the cucumbers. Uh, if you want to do the cucumbers, don't leave them in very long. Um, I don't know if a week is even too long or not, but uh, I did two weeks. It's too long. So anyway, there you go. Uh, I don't want to spend too long on this. It's just, uh, yeah, it was, it's really good. I would do it again. Just um, either, like I say, uh, no cucumbers or significantly less time with the cucumber. Uh, so it'll probably be about a month before I do the next, you know, the next full Brewing video airs, but until then, uh, have a great August, uh, which is when this is being aired. And uh, I'll see you in a month for another, another full video, in a week for another, you know, brewing tip or, or topic. And until then, as always, happy brewing. <laughs>